So we're clearly in an illogical market when you have top tier companies like our big banks running down mortgage repayments because, well, they've deferred a lot of the mortgage repayments for the next quarter. And so basically what this all means is we've got lower dividends and we're already in a low rate environment. So where is the money gonna come from? But regardless of the craziness and the madness in the market, today I actually wanted to touch on the travel sector, a sector that's been hit really, really hard during this pandemic. And recently I've been recommended a lot of Warren Buffett videos from his annual meeting, you know, that the, the highlights that Yahoo um, Finance has put together and put online. Because if you haven't heard, he's sold out on all, I'm talking all of his holdings in the airline sector. So in this video, I wanted to show some of those highlights grab his context and his thoughts and why he doesn't think that this is gonna fit into his long-term portfolio and grab my own thoughts and kind of mesh the two together and see what we can come up with in terms of whether you should be buying into the travel sector and whether I'll be buying back into the travel sector. And of course, guys, don't forget to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. I'll just wait for you to smash that whilst I have another drink. Done? All right, let's get into it. The world has changed for the airlines and I don't know how it's changed and I hope it corrects itself uh, in a reasonably prompt way. I don't know whether the um, Americans will have now changed their habits or will change their habits because of, of uh, an extended period, if it happens that uh, we're semi-shut down uh, in, the, in the economy. Uh, I don't know whether the trends toward, you know, what people have been doing by, by phone. I mean, I've been, yeah, when we, when we sell something, uh, right, when we sell something, very often it's going to be our entire stake. I mean, we, we, we don't trim positions or like that. That's just not the way we approach it anymore. So it's true. Buffett has exited all stakes in the airline stocks. And he wanted to be clear that he wasn't disappointed in those businesses and the performance of them. But with the current trends, we can see that there are a couple of concerns I think we should also take into note and consider. Although we have a word from the Oracle himself, there seems to be a continued rally for the travel stocks in general and people continuing to look at these investments as great investment options because the entire stock market and share prices have gone up as a whole. And just from my observation and the report from ASICS, it seems like a lot of new investors have come in with such a bullish mindset because everything's gone up at the moment. It's kind of like property prices when property prices went up, you know, before the whole crash happened. And thinking that the travel stocks and many other sectors are such a great buying opportunity because they've been so heavily discounted. Like extremely discounted, we're talking over 50% from their all-time highs. Now, I don't want to rule out the fact that someone could make a great potential gains with these stocks because you could absolutely, absolutely can make such gains and wins because there's so much volatility within the fluctuation in percentages. But going into an investment because you think it's discounted and you see talk about it everywhere on the news isn't a sound investment strategy and the likelihood of your investment swinging the other way is also quite likely to happen, which could deter you from ever coming back into the market and playing again. Sorry, I shouldn't say playing like it's like gambling, like investing again. With all that being said though, I think that most investors would agree in saying that Warren is rather a bullish investor. Next year, I know America's going to move forward over time. You know, he generally comes on and is a great sounding board for many investors when there's a lot of fear going on. You know, he's the first person, one of the first, if not the first, to get broadcasted on TV to kind of just calm everybody down. But when you sell out on all of your shares in the airline stocks, that has to be taken into consideration, big time. Because at the moment, we have one of the biggest bulls in the American market. God, like he said it so many times, do not bet against America. But yet here he is selling off all of his position in an entire industry, taking out all four major airlines from their portfolio holdings. Doesn't that kind of tell you something? And isn't that kind of an indicator that he doesn't really see any value in them in the future in terms of growth? and cash flow. But of course, with that kind of statement, I guarantee you I'm gonna get comments like, Lee, people are gonna to wanna to fly again. They're gonna hop on planes. You'll hop on a plane again. Maybe you'll hop over to New Zealand. Maybe you'll go to Jordan, you know, I don't know, some place. And you know what? You're damn right I'll hop back on a plane. I don't know how soon, but I'll hop back on. But then let's play devil's advocate for a moment, shall we? Okay guys, so let's play devil's advocate and put on our bull hat here. So bullish case. Excuse the dodgy handwriting. So let's say travel resumes again and we're permitted to fly and people start flying again. And how many flights do you think we're gonna get? Are we gonna to return to, let's say a 40% flight capacity in comparison to what we were prior to COVID? Now, you know what, screw that. The bull might say, you know, man, people have been stuck at home and people wanna start flying again. 
it's probably going to be like 60%. Sounds reasonable to me, but again, another bull might come along and go, nah, bro, it's going to be a friggin' 80%. You know, this person here who says 80% is probably sipping one too many Red Bulls, and the person who thinks it's going to be higher than this, or go back to capacity, normal capacity, is probably on some sort of, you know what, they're probably just intoxicated as a whole, okay? Because this is going to be insane if we return to 100% flying capacity. Regardless of what percentage and what line we get to, one thing is always going to be there for the airlines. They're always going to have 100% of the fixed costs. And what do I mean by that? Well, cost of airport, maintenance on a plane, gas, staffing, and there's a few other things on there, but one thing that they do have to take care of, and it's been a big issue for them, is repaying that debt. So, think about it, we've got 100% of the fixed cost, but we haven't gone back to 100% capacity. We've now got an extra debt that we have to pay off. You can kind of see that what we're gonna get in total is negative cash flow. Now, if we know one thing about Buffett is he loves this thing. He loves cash flow. And if we're not getting any of it, you can see why, you know, in the foreseeable future, for a couple of years into it, he's pretty much bailed out of the stocks. He didn't bail out the stocks by giving them more cash. He left them. So yes, guys, that's my thoughts on the bullish case for airline stocks. Now, to be honest, I think Buffett has left the airline sector because he's looking for greater returns and more profitability in terms of cash flow. And we're definitely not going to be getting them from these airlines who've just had to raise billions of dollars to keep themselves afloat during this rough time. But I think when you're looking at this industry, you need to not just think about the airlines, but think about the consumers. What is the macro perspective on the changes in consumer behavior? Now, I think in every single sector, consumer behavior post-corona is going to change drastically. Just think about any sector that's been affected by it currently, and then how they'll adapt coming out on the other side. Now, this is an interesting one because this is all kind of a guesstimation and a forecast for everyone. There hasn't been any particular trends because no flights have been permitted as of yet for recreational travel that might suggest that either people are going to start flying again as much as they were prior to COVID. But I highly, highly, highly doubt it's going to be the case because people fly when there's discretionary income. And with the job loss rate, I doubt people have the same capacity of discretionary income to travel just as much as they were. With no money to spend and the scare of possibly being infected, this bullish case of people starting to travel and fly all over again is starting to look a little bearish. In 2019, it was reported by Australian airlines and travel agencies that they all were facing the issues of slowing leisure markets in Australia. These were aspects of the travel sector that have been mentioned in many of the biannual and annual reports of travel companies. And prior to the Rony Rona, we had companies such as Flight Center shedding many of their staff due to the slowing demand in the market. Now, if you've watched any of my prior videos on Qantas or Virgin, you'll know that international flights make the smallest amount of revenue when you compare it to domestic flights in all of the airlines, like just take a look. So given that's already the case, that they don't make a lot of revenue from people flying internationally, and we already have certain countries still in lockdown, again, I want to question whether the airlines are going to make a return like everyone thinks it's going to make. Like when you're looking into countries in Europe, well, that's not happening. What about South America? Yeah, maybe some other time, bud. Or how about New York for some of that delicious New York pizza? Yep, might have to give that one a skip. So now we've painted a bit of context around the airlines and how they might recover from this, let's look at some of the numbers and see how the shares have actually performed. Qantas has come out from its low of $2.14 up to the $3.50 mark, which is a move of 61%. So it's recovering, but nowhere close, not even close to its highs of $7. They've also taken out in total $5.58 billion in debt, which is secured against their Dreamliners. This type of capital raising is no different than any other US airline, which is what Warren was saying that he's not a fan of, to be investing billions of dollars into companies that are constantly losing money. The flight agencies haven't fared too well. When we look at Flight Center and Webjet, there's really nothing happening in there in terms of price move. Now, if you had to get my thoughts out of the two, I'm liking Webjet just a little bit more due to their web beds business, of which is taking off prior to the Rony Rona. And I think for Flight Center to succeed, they need to become more online centric 
and reduce its overhead cost, which it was looking at doing anyways by removing more of their brick and mortar stores. So are these shares a buy for me? Absolutely not. I have to say no on that one, but are they a good swing trade potentially in the short term? And the main reason for all my bearishness on the airline stock or just any travel stock as a whole is that their growth metrics are just terrible. Because again, there can't be more demand for travel than there was prior to the pandemic due to the current health risks that people are taking on when they travel and the legal restrictions that countries have placed on domestic residents and travelers from abroad is just another deterrent and another barrier stopping people from, from traveling. Now, what is the bullish case for travel to commence again is that many countries rely on tourism, including Australia, as a large source of revenue. And I have no doubt that many countries will go out of their own way. Think of countries in Southeast Asia, any, I guess, European country, like maybe Greece or something like that, that doesn't have a large amount of exports and relies heavily on tourism as a big source of income. But yes, guys, that's it from me. I will see you on the next video in our next installment of the Wax Docs, which is Afterpay. All right, guys, catch you later. Cheers.